Okay, let's do it. I may be a vagina doctor and an OBGYN, but we need to talk about the updates I've got for you on male birth control. So let's get going. Welcome back everybody. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator. And my channel is the health class you wish you had in high school. And it's not just for people who can get pregnant, but the guys too. And this video is for you. If you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Turn on the bell so you never miss an upload and follow me all week long on TikTok and Instagram where I'm having lots of fun at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln. Okay, we are talking male birth control because birth control is everybody's job, not just women and those people who can get pregnant. And especially in light of the overturn of Roe v. Wade and the lack of reproductive access that we are seeing now in lots of states, we have got to get everybody on board with not getting pregnant if you don't want to. About half of pregnancies in the United States are unplanned and about half of people who get abortions were on birth control at the time of getting pregnant. So we need some extra help. We need you guys and you people who can get others pregnant to like pitch in here. And I've heard from a lot of you who say, what can I do? What can I take? Why aren't there more options for me? I don't want to get my girlfriend pregnant. And I love you for that. So let's talk about four things that are in the pipeline right now so you can hear about what's coming. <laughs> it's the second time I've coming. Okay. Anyway, okay, let's go. Okay, before we jump into those, I do want to let you know about why we don't have more stuff out there already. The main thing is that up until really like right now, people have seen birth control as a lady's problem, right? It's our job. We should just keep our legs closed. Blah, blah. But really, there's just not been funding and that sucks. And so we're really playing catch up. The other thing, too, is that it's a lot easier to stop an event that happens one time a month, which is ovulation, from something that happens continuously, which is sperm production. So it's not as simple as, you know, female birth control might be. The other thing is that when we're doing that, we've got to suppress the testosterone and suppress the hormones that make sperm without affecting other things and other side effects that you might get from testosterone suppression. Now, before you get angry at me and say, well, Jen, there's lots of side effects from birth control. Like guys should just be able to deal with the side effects. I hear you. And it's actually not the same thing because when we are comparing side effects in birth control for people who can get pregnant, we have to weigh it against what the other state could be, which is pregnancy. Now for guys or those who produce sperm, for them taking birth control, we have to weigh their side effects against just not taking birth control because they can never get pregnant. Meaning that the bar is a bit higher because they're taking a medicine really not to help them, but to help somebody else, which I'm a huge fan of. But when it comes to the acceptability of side effects, the bar is higher. And I agree with that because they are not taking a medicine to prevent something that could affect their body and put themselves at risk like pregnancy. It's a different thing. And so I actually agree with that. Okay, so we've got four things that I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna jump first into the hormonal pill. Now I'm gonna look at the name of it because it's really long. It is dimethandrolone undecanoate <laughs> or DMAU or 11 beta methyl 19 nor testosterone 17 beta diodesyl carbonate. Oh my God. Or MNTDC. Yeah, okay, so those are hormones that are in a pill form that are the most promising form of hormonal pills we have for the guys out there. Why? Because right now these are once a day dosing. Previous pills have required taking the pills from like two to four times a day, and that's because they just weren't absorbed as well. This particular pill is unique because it has a hormone that is androgen-like or testosterone-like and progesterone-like. And both of these actually work really well together to decrease sperm production, but also to mitigate or decrease the side effects that are seen with the other kinds of hormonal birth control pills for guys. So studies of this drug are ongoing, and they've shown that not only are the people taking them tolerating them physically, but they're also willing to take them, meaning that they find it acceptable taking these pills. So it's out there, more data is coming. And for all of these, I'll have references and resources in the show notes so you can dig into it a little bit more if you're interested. Okay, there's another pill out there too, just announced, but what's different about it is that it's a non-hormonal pill. And this was just announced in March of 2022. I'm gonna cheat and look at the name of this too, but the name of this particular compound is called YCT529, which sounds like a, like a Star Wars droid or something. But anyway, so this is a non-hormonal compound and the way that it works, it inhibits a retinoic acid receptor a specific type of receptor that has been shown to stop sperm production and make male mice sterile. Pretty cool. 
So when they block and knock out this gene in mice, they make them sterile and it's completely reversible, which is really awesome. They actually showed in the mice that when they gave them this compound, they reduced their sperm count by 99%. And then once they stopped giving them this compound, they were able to father pups at like four to six weeks. I had no idea that mice babies were called pups. Anyway, we're learning so much today. So human trials of this are going to happen in late 2022. So while this is a really cool thing, we're still very far from it being available in humans, but this is the first step in getting there. The third kind of male birth control that's currently in the pipeline for studies is a hormonal skin gel. And this is a gel that's applied either to the shoulder or the back. The one that I'm specifically talking about is called Nest T. And just like the hormonal pill that I mentioned, this has both a form of a progesterone compound and a testosterone compound. The role of the progesterone is that it blocks sperm production in the testes and the testosterone component helps to decrease other side effects that you might see with low testosterone. So it helps to maintain sex drive and other bodily functions that need testosterone in guys. This is actually the farthest along in terms of human studies, but we're still likely five or more years away from actual use in people. And you might be really annoyed by this and be like, why can't they just speed this up, right? We got a, we got a vaccine for COVID in less than a year. This is a very novel thing. And also the COVID vaccine had actually been in development for 20 years. So it's not like it just came out of nowhere. This is a novel kind of medication. And so it takes time and we need to make sure that not only it works because it just takes one sperm to get pregnant, but that it's also safe for the people taking it. Okay, the fourth and final kind of male birth control that I wanna to talk to you today about is one that I actually find really cool and that I'm the most excited about. And it's a non-hormonal gel and it's called Adam by Contraline or Contraline, I have no idea. But studies are going to start soon in Melbourne, Australia. And the premise of this gel is that it's injected into the vas deferens, which are the tubes that allow sperm to go, you know, to leave the testes and to be ejaculated out just like that, of course, it causes a temporary blockage. And this gel not only stops and absorbs the sperm, but once it's done working, I'm not sure what the lifespan of it is, but once it's done working, it then disintegrates. And so it's completely reversible. I love this because this is something that you don't have to worry about somebody doing every day, just like in female birth control, like taking a pill or putting on a patch or something like that. So it's really like set it and forget it, kind of like the IUDs in those people who have a uterus, kind of like the same idea. And it's completely reversible. So this has just secured funding. And like I said, trials are just about to start in Melbourne, Australia, and I'm excited to learn more. And no, I'm not funded by any of these companies. I'm just giving you information as I find it. Okay, so those are four things that are in the pipeline for male birth control. What questions or comments do you have? Would you trust your partner to use one of these? Are you really annoyed that these haven't been developed sooner? Like I am. Drop your thoughts, let me know. And I'm also really curious, would you yourself sign up for a study if this was available for you? I'm just interested to hear. All right, my friends, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Leave me some comments, references, and resources in the show notes. And happy contracepting, both for the girls and the guys out there, because really, it takes all of us to not make a baby. All right, stay safe, my friends.